Hi, this is Bruce Kidd with the Kidd Consulting Group, and this is another edition of Insights for Executives video series. Today we're going to talk about people. It's an important topic, always seems more important today than ever, and I'm delighted to have a special guest today, um, the owner-founder of Purple Inc., a full-service human resources, human capital advisory firm that does everything you need to find, keep, and retain your employees. I'm delighted to have Jody Curtis with me today. Jody, thank you for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. It's our pleasure. So uh, we were talking before we started. Um, this just seems like an unprecedented time to me in my 35 years in business regarding people issues in companies of all sizes. I, I serve on the board of a company, actually two, and um, advise a few other private companies here in town, and they can't find people. Right. They just right. can't find people. And it is. It's everywhere, Bruce, from the lowest levels, from fast food restaurants to even the manager, director, executive levels. People are struggling to find yeah. high performers or, or people at all, really. Yeah. So. I heard an incredibly sad but funny story. So a company here in town I know posted a position uh, manufacturing company, pretty pretty traditional manufacturing production type position. They got a hundred inquiries, I think mostly resumes, but supposedly a hundred people were interested. They set aside two days for interviews. Two people showed up. Oh. Two out of a hundred that said they were coming. Yeah. And I don't know how you deal with that. I, yeah. just, I just don't, I don't get it. There's just something different. So anyway, we know successful companies have to have good people. Right, right. Companies are built by people, not products. And so, you know, you're in the middle of this every day, you and your firm. Um, everybody's recruiting, but what else is, what else is impacting turnover yeah. in companies and yeah. lack of retention? Well, and I'll go back to your story for a second first, Bruce, that um, it, it's, it's crazy. Not only do we just have less people in the workforce, but those people have so many choices that they don't even show up yeah. for the interview. Like we've never, well, I don't think we've ever seen such low employment before and we definitely have never gone through a period of just people being ghosted yeah. and not even showing up so first of all i'm surprised they got a hundred people yeah that i was inquired. too but to have two uh, two percent of those show up is is crazy they just have so many other choices yeah right yep but we've seen i think it was just a um uh i don't even know what to call it like a uh a roadblock where everything to get came together at one point where the younger generations, there's less people through COVID, more people retired, more women left the workforce. We have one of the lowest uh, points of women in the workforce than we've had in over 30 years, hmm. really probably almost 40 hmm. years. Uh, so, and that all happened at the same time. We've been talking about it for years that we knew the baby boomers were going to retire yeah. and we were going to struggle to have people, but it was not expected to happen this early. And that just puts so much pressure on people to think about leaving the jobs they have, right? right. right. They can look out and see everybody else is looking too. It looks like a, a wide green pasture with lots of flowers in it and, yeah. and they want to go out the door and go to the field. And so I don't know this, but my assumption would be that we'll call it employee loyalty to mm -hmm. a company, their employer, is probably less than it used to be. Yeah. And so it's harder to keep people. It is. So it is. again, you're, you're dealing with this, your firm's dealing with this all the time uh, with companies. What's the key? What's what's one or two keys that a company owner can think about as far as retaining the good people they have? Yeah, I think there's been so much talk about recruiting, right, which is important, but we're we're we've lost focus on the people we have probably more than ever because yeah. we're we're panicked and we're scared and we're worried about not having enough people. 
but we have to focus on those people we have. We gotta find out why have they stayed? Why are they there? Are we meeting those needs? Yeah. And that, that takes lots of conversation and lots of questions. Yeah. And if you have a hundred people, they might all have a different answer to that. So it's not always a, a one-step solution there, but just yeah. the simple things I think of talking to people, having coffee with people, taking people out to lunch, checking in. And it, that doesn't always have to be the owner or the president. It's, it's everyone, it's your managers and yeah. your whole leadership team doing that. So I was talking with somebody earlier today about this issue and you know, there are three or four functional things that we're offering employees. Yeah. As, as business owners, one is the compensation. What's the right. salary? Right. Number two, what are the are there any retirement plan opportunities, 401k and otherwise? So you know, I'm building a nest for the future based or more than just my daily compensation. Three then are the employee benefits like medical insurance and other. Right. And then fourth is just sort of the culture, which is softer, but I don't think less important in today's world. Right. The culture of the company I'm working in, and do I appreciate that you know right. so, so emotional payback for me so w what would you tell the business owners and executives that are watching this what what what's the number one recruiting employee benefit that you see companies using now flexibility um, you know there's so and I know not everyone can do it right, right. we have firemen and policemen and hospital employees that that need to be there at certain times a day, but they still, they might need to have someone there 24 hours a day, but they still might be able to offer more flexibility and allowing people to work eight hour shifts versus 12 hour shifts or yeah. a four hour shift versus an eight hour shift, right? To give, uh, there's been, once again, there's been so much talk about remote work, mm -hmm. which, I think people are enjoying, but yet the research says most people don't want that 100% of the time. They really? want to be in an environment where they're working with people and collaborating and are building yeah. relationships with people in the workforce. Yeah. Um, they, they, they want it when they want it, I think. <laughs> we can't always offer the perfect schedule to everyone, but anything we can do, um, even flexible start times, right? Maybe you need your people to be in the office eight hours a day or 10 hours a day, but could you give them a window to say you can start work between seven and nine and yeah. then leave 10 hours later? Yeah. You know, Bruce, one thing I'm always fascinated with, I grew up in southern Indiana, very near the Crane Naval Base. Mm -hmm. And most all of my friends' parents worked at the Crane Naval Base. This was back in the 60s, dating myself a bit. And back then, Crane Naval Base had four-day work weeks and they had flexible start yeah. dates. Yeah. So for me, growing up and watching all my friends' parents, my mom and dad didn't work there, but um, they, they had those options. So when I got out into the workforce, I was almost like, wait a minute, why, why can't I do that? <laughs> why can't I work that way? Um, yeah. But it's come back around now that people are saying, we've got to look at every single possibility we can have to give people some flexibility. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have a client here that's a small contract manufacturer and that's, the demand for his product is such that he could actually have a second shift. Right. There's no people to hire to yeah. do the second shift. So he had to come up with a creative solution and he's early on on this, so we don't really know how it's gonna work yet. But so he went to the four day, 10 hour yes. work days, four days a week, Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. But for those people that want to come back in and work on Friday morning till noon or Saturday morning till noon, the, he's gonna be there, the office is open. If they wanna earn overtime, you know, additional nice. compensation, they can do that At, and there's a schedule you just, Put your name in when you want. You don't have to commit to doing it every week. Right. But 
Again, I he's trying that. He's trying to be flexible to get right. the most out of the people he has because he right. can't find more people. Right. Um, you know, Bruce, you just mentioned compensation again for the second time, and that's a big part of all of this as well. You know, inflation's up. People want to earn more money. There's more salary compression. You can't just raise the incoming salary without increasing the salary yeah, to yeah. all of those above. And that's making that more difficult on businesses too, yeah, right? They yeah. don't have the people to make the sales in order to pay people at higher rates. And right. again, somebody across the street is dangling a carrot in front of them. Yeah. And it makes it really hard. Yeah. So. Um, what else would you advise the men and women that are running companies that are watching us as far as being creative, as far as retention? Right. Right. choices and re retention strategies. Right. I think we have to know who are the top performers. And that can be difficult. I, you know, I hear, I have a lot of clients who say like, well, I need all of my people or they're all good people. <laughs> but if you had to break them out in that top 10%, that top 20%, I think you have to um, you might not tell anybody who they are, or hopefully you'll tell them, but not as a group, right. that these are people I cannot leave. I need the information they have, I need the skills they have, and most importantly, I need them as leaders to be able to retain the star performers of that level and yeah. the next level. Yeah. We can't be losing our star performers or organizations yeah. will fall apart through that. One last question, I guess. So keeping the good people, part of its employee benefits, part of its culture, part of its compensation, always been that way. Mm -hmm. But how about, um, we'll call it retraining or up-training, up-skilling, whatever you want to call it. Right. Those good people that we have that maybe don't have some skills that we'd like them to have so right. they can advance in the company. Do you see more of that happening? I do, and thank you for bringing that up because I think that is super important, right? Or we had a client just last week who was looking for, in the recruiting world, we call it a purple squirrel. <laughs> you know, they wanted this person to have the exact degree and the exact level of experience and, you know, check, check, check the box. And we couldn't find it. I hate to admit it, but we couldn't find it. And we just practically begged them yeah. to separate what can you teach them and what do you need them to know? What classes could you send them to? Once they came on, this yeah. wasn't a rocket science type job, right? right? There right. were so many skills that could have been taught and learned yeah. if they had, um, you know, broadened their box a little bit. We had lots of candidates who had a lot of those check boxes, yeah. but didn't hit all of them. Yeah. So I have two additional straightforward small questions. The first one is, do you see this current environment we're in continuing this this job market employment challenge continuing in the future two three five years yeah i do <laughs> unfortunately i think there's there's two sides to that story a little bit so the younger generations are not getting bigger right we don't have more people coming up through the work pipeline. Yeah. I heard a speaker last week say at a conference that the greatest thing we could all do for the workforce, uh, our future workforce, is to have more babies because literally we just need more numbers. Now I think we'll get smarter, right? We'll figure out ways to do things with technology and less people, but that will take some time as well too. Yeah. However, on the other side, there's a lot of stories coming out, more research coming out that uh, some people are coming back to the workforce. Some of those baby boomers who retired earlier than they wanted to are finding themselves wanting to come back and, yeah. uh, and have a role, even if it's part-time. Some yeah. of those moms who left the workforce doing the same thing. 
Um, we're also seeing a lot of boomerang employees. So people who left their organization thinking there was a greener pasture with flowers across the street and realizing it wasn't greener yeah. on the other side yeah. and they're coming back to employers. Hmm. So that's the good news. But in the end, if we have less people, somebody's going to suffer yeah. there. Yeah. Then the second part of the question is for men and women that are leading these companies around Indiana, which predominantly are small, privately held, that's our fundamental economy. What, what one or two tips would you tell them to focus on? We've talked about a lot, but is there anything you would tell them you really got to think about this? Yeah. Well, I would repeat one of those to say, identify the star performers. Yeah. If you're not talking to all your people, talk to them. Find out what they need, what they like, help them discover what they do best every day and, and provide them with the opportunities to do more of that. Okay. You know, we talk a lot at Purple Ink about having a joy-powered culture or joy-powered employees. Yeah. And we can't, we can't solve everything and we can't do everything for everyone, but what can we do to keep those star yeah. performers yeah. in line? Yep. Um, you know, compensation, it, it is important because everyone's, this company's going up a dollar and this one's going up two and this one's going up one. So at a minimum, make sure that you're at market for, I was in a conversation with a leader a couple of weeks ago who said, we've, we've raised our, you know, our, our lowest wage in the company. We've raised it to $13 an hour now. And I said, boy, you know, I'm hearing 15, 16, and 17 now. So yeah. it's like they were way below <laughs> to start with. Yeah. And so they're they're making improvements, but they've got a long way to go. Yeah. So it's an it's a interesting, unique, challenging world we're living in right now. It sure well, is. Well, thank you for your time. Thanks thank for you. sharing your expertise because I know you, you know this uh, topic very well, and your firm's fantastic at helping companies. Thank you. So... Um, we appreciate you being here. Thank you. And appreciate your time. Um, we will be back with another installment of Insights for Executives very soon. Thank you.